Hi guys, okay, so this is your second uh, science video for the week, uh, Thursday. Um, yes, uh, last time we left off, we were on page 660. Uh, we were this page right here, okay, so you should have finished that page. Um, we were talking about volume and pitch in number four. Um, so I'm gonna move on to page uh, 661. Okay, um, number five says explain how a sound's pitch and frequency are related. Now remember, um, a pitch and volume aren't related to each other, so the higher the pitch doesn't mean necessarily mean it needs to be loud, um, but frequency and pitch are related. So the higher the frequency, the, uh, I'm sorry, the higher the pitch, the more frequency, okay, of the wave, okay? So I, I gave the example of a beating heart um, the first time. It's slow beating heart, low, free, uh, low pitch. Fast beating heart, high pitch, okay? So the high, this simple, uh, excuse my error at the top. The higher a sound pitch, the higher the frequency, right? And then vice versa, the lower the, the pitch, the lower the frequency, okay? Number six says, explain how volume and decibels are related, okay? So decibels are how we measure volume, remember? And every, anything above 85 decibels is uh, harmful to your ear or can be potentially harmful to your ear. So the higher the uh, volume, the more the decibels, the higher the number. Um, and then the lower the volume, the lower the decibels. So they gave an example, um, if you remember, uh, people whispering, it's like around 20 decibels, okay? So the louder a sound is, the more decibels it has, and the lower a sound is, the less decibels it has, okay? So I'll show you that. So if you wanna copy that down, the louder a sound is, the more decibels it has, and then the lower a sound is, the less decibels it has. Okay. Now we have a picture of two waves here. Okay. And it says write captions. Okay. Um, write a caption for each picture that uses the term amplitude. Now amplitude is how we measure energy in a wave, how much energy it has. So if it's a high amplitude wave, it has a lot of energy. Okay. Um, so the first picture, that's showing a lot of energy, the higher the wave, okay? Think of ocean waves, like we gave, I gave this example in one of my other videos. When it's really high, the waves are really high, it has a lot of energy, and then they kind of fizzle out. Maybe when they get closer to the shore, they kind of, you know, they're not as high, okay? So the first one, I would caption it, uh, this wave has a large amplitude, right? It's a large amplitude wave, okay? It has a lot of energy. The second one, not so much. This uh, wave has small amplitude, okay? It doesn't have a lot of energy left, okay? And remember, um, from the source, the closest to the source of where the wave starts, that's gonna be the most energy, and then it's gonna die out from the farther away it gets, the less energy it has, okay? Um, if you flip over to page 662, it says to um, for number eight to draw a sound wave that has at least three crests and three troughs. It says to draw an arrow above that shows the direction the energy is traveling and then below dots to show two areas where air molecules are crowded together and two areas where the molecules are spread apart. Use arrows to show areas of compression within parts of the wave. So what I want you guys to do is just draw um, a regular wave like this. Don't worry about these two dots here. We're not gonna do the, the um, where the energy collects because we didn't learn about that, okay? Um, so you could just draw, make sure it has three crests. Remember the crests are up here. One, two, three. I did four just to be safe. And then three troughs, one, two, three and then draw your arrow in which direction it's going. That's all you're gonna do for number eight, okay? We're not gonna get all complicated with where the air molecules are. And 
okay? Um, number nine, it just wants you to label the wave. Um, I just showed you where the crest is and where the trough is, and W is where you can measure wavelength, and A where you can measure amplitude. So again, crest up here, trough down here, um, what's next wavelength okay so wavelength you could either measure from one crest to another crest or one trough to another trough and then for amplitude you can measure you would measure this the it's uh the distance from here to here okay so let me just write that a, we'll put A here, just so you can see what it looks like. S here, or C here for crest, T, uh, T for trough, and I think that's it. Wavelength, okay, so wavelength, put here. Okay, perfect, but get the idea. C for crest, that's where you're measuring the amplitude you're using the um, middle line. And then this is the trough down here. And then that's where you're measuring the wavelength from crest to crest. Or you could do, you could draw a line down here from trough to trough, okay? And that's that, okay? All right. And then for number 10, it says list four sounds that could damage your ears. Tell how you could protect your ears from these dangerous sounds. Um, we already did, you already did examples. Um, so you could just go back and use examples that you already used. Uh, we use firecrackers as examples. Um, you know, uh, a loud plane. If you're right next to a plane, that would probably damage your ears. Um, Anything that you could think of that's above 85 decibels or 100 decibels um, without ear protection. Um, so what would you do to protect your ears? You would wear um, earplugs, okay? That's pretty simple. Um, so uh, list four sounds that could damage your ears and then it says how can you protect your ears from these dangerous sounds? Earplugs, simple, okay? And... Um, that's it for this section. And we're gonna start talking about um, light in, in the next section, okay? So sound and light are kind of interrelated and you're gonna see how that works. Um, so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching.